Kate Van Den Bugert. I'm the founding director and publisher of GoGo Go City Guides, a new generation guide publisher. At the moment, GoGo Go London and GoGo Go Paris are you now on our shelves and soon GoGo Go New York. So based in Paris for the last 12 years and here today in the, my local Italian trattoria around the corner from my office. GoGo Go began as a monthly fanzine cultural guide. It wasn't a tourist sort of guide as it is now, always in English, but distributed for free around the city. And it has evolved, you know, it's then went onto the web uniquely and still more of a cultural guide. Before morphing into a tourist guide about two, two three years ago, though we started with a PDF version that was downloadable from our site, and now there's, you know, an actual print version in the app. I consider that we're a new generation publisher in that we're very dependent and interested in how this digital age sort of changes the way we share information. We're very active on social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, etc. And our app is updated sort of live. You know, we can update it anytime we want and it's downloaded into the, everyone's app around the world. You know, I think that old model that many print guide publishers are still following of kind of closing editorial in January 2012 and the guide is the 2013 guide. You know, that's just not at all a reality for us. We're, we're producing our seasonal guide and we close editorial a couple of weeks before it goes to the printer and it's print on demand, a new, a, quite a revolutionary way of printing that allows small independent companies like mine to exist and to, and to publish. And then I think, you know, that any publisher now is, is having to change the way they do things just because people have new expectations about the freshness and up-to-dateness of, of information given that everyone is online and most people, well, many people have smartphones and they're amazing tools for travellers. We're trying to keep up with the opportunities that it allows us in terms of getting information out there. The idea with GoGo City Guides is that it's highly edited. It's about getting down to sort of destination addresses that are exciting to go to, that are emblematic or that are new and buzzing. You know, we, we have our finger on the pulse. That's kind of how secret, but I guess it's just about being plugged into what's happening, having a network of people, following blogs and Twitter like, you know, everybody else. There's correspondence in each city, so there's someone in London taking care of London. We're developing the New York Guide right now, so there's someone in New York. We don't try and do other cities from Paris. I certainly feel deeply Australian in Paris in terms of my work, and I think it's... I, I attribute it as being what allows or drives my activity, which is just a very deep work ethic, which I think is very Australian and very different to the, to the French attitude to work. I feel that Australians have a great sense of, and I certainly did and do, a sense of a much more flexible social hierarchy in Australia. You know, you can invent yourself, you can have an idea and make it happen. That's really not the case in France, where despite the fact that there's free education and a lot of sort of socialist politics, it's a hugely tough and competitive place with quite strong social hierarchies. So I think a lot of people don't feel a sense of possibility that I, as an Australian, certainly always felt and brought here. The idea that you can have an idea and you can be excited about something and you can just go out and goddamn do it. You just do it. Well, someone that made GoGo -Go happen was Maurice Schwartz, the sort of pioneering Australian publisher who backed GoGo -Go way back in the, in the beginning. He certainly took a risk and wanted to support some young entrepreneurial energy and I'll be eternally grateful, you know, so that was what got GoGo -Go off the ground. Look, I'm totally going freestyle. I mean, I did not come to GoGo -Go with any business background, culture, family history. I came to it as a naive and fiery, determined young woman with an idea and with a background in publishing. GoGo -Go wasn't profitable for a very long time, but it's going in the right direction. And I didn't ever come to GoGo -Go with a kind of business plan. It was more about... I guess, a sort of furious desire to be an independent person. It's a curious society in how it sees entrepreneurs and business people. It, it, it's uh, been interesting for me to observe and 
I'm still trying to understand it. I don't understand it properly myself, but there's a huge suspicion around money and any business person who isn't bankrupt seems to be, you know, there's an assumption that they're exploiting people. You know, it's a very strange, it's very strange and very, very, very different to Australian or American sort of respect for entrepreneurs and people that make stuff happen and make ideas real and where there's a sort of, you know, an admiration for people who, 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 who create things. In France, business is a suspect activity. So I wouldn't sort of go around telling people that I'm a business person or that I'm a... It's very different. I mean, I think Australia seems, you know, is a great place to make things happen. It's a new, booming, rich country with a free market economy. So there's kind of no more fertile ground, I would imagine, to, to making stuff happen. By the same token, it's a small country and it's a isolated country. So getting ideas, sharing ideas, seeing what other people are doing is important. It's, it's, it's good to get out and see stuff. When I got pregnant with, my, with our daughter, I moved back home to work and stayed there for a couple of years. And at the end, it was very difficult sort of trying to combine domestic life with not even a dedicated room for, for my work. And then we actually bought the office that I'm operating out of now, which is uh, a little former shop on street level. Very small, I guess, little space that my husband, who does interiors, redid. And it's a great thing to have a dedicated space for GoGo, and it's it's very important to have a a workspace that's that's dedicated to your activity that gives it a sort of um, physical reality as well. One of the the things that drives me is just this deep need for independence and the flexibility that I have working for myself is so precious and, and allows me to, you know, be there when I need to be for, for our daughter and it's just something I can't imagine negotiating on that kind of flexibility, yeah, and it's crucial to parenting. The future is digital. The future is definitely digital. The future of publishing is digital and the future for... People with ideas is digital. I believe that certainly for GoGo, -Go, this digital age has, has allowed me to make this happen. I mean, the opportunities to, to publish that have never been so, you know, it's never been so possible to, to bring your vision to, to the public stage, to the world stage. And I think that's really, really exciting and really radical and really politically exciting. It's new and it's easy to forget perhaps how radical and new it is because it's so normal and because it gets, of course, infiltrated so deeply by, by capitalism. But there's room to, to make stuff happen cheaply and easily and that's, that's exciting. And to be in touch with people who like what you do, you know, to have a direct link to people who are using or seeing what you're making and I think that's, that's new and exciting. So, yeah, the future is for GoGo -Go is definitely digital and that's what's deciding how we go forward. Au revoir l'Australie.